Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Build Part 3, Roads, Waterways and Bridges. Now last week you remember we covered uh, the cathedral building we have there on the right, not quite a cathedral perhaps, but uh, loosely based on the design of one. And in front of that is a large square where we're going to put our market square, and then a gravel road connecting it up to the castle. And that was just a rough kind of road to get us, to, to kind of show us where the middle of the area we were building in was. But what I want to cover this week is roads and waterways. I want a canal system because we're right next to um, we're right next to a river, so it makes sense to have canals. And I also want to to connect up and zone out the various areas inside our perimeter walls with roads, so that um, so that we have areas we can visualize and then uh, and then map out in our heads. And here you see me digging out the trench that we're going to turn into our canals. I've gone four blocks down and five blocks wide. Each side of those five blocks are going to be uh, mossy stone bricks and stone brick steps at the top to give it a bit of a lip. And the bottom is going to be just a layer of mossy stone bricks. Now, your texture pack may not have mossy stone bricks. Some don't. And so, as an alternative, you could use mossy cobblestone or even uh, you could actually use pretty much whatever you damn well like because the the bricks that we're putting in as mossy mossy stone bricks are the ones that are submerged in the water it makes sense that you know these bricks are so close to water all the time they're going to develop a layer of algae and uh, and green gunk but to be honest because they are submerged you're not really going to see it at all so any brick that you put there is going to be going to be fine but but for the sake of neatness and perfectionism i've used mossy stone bricks and you've seen me here using world edit to get rid of the water. I would have taken it out manually, but water is one of those frustrating things that's really difficult to get rid of. You see I've dammed up the canal at the uh, the riverside, and uh, there's a look at how deep and wide the trench actually is. And you see me, I've come back and started to fill in the sides, the bottom, with this mossy stone brick. If, if these damn sheep will get out of the way, they caused me no end of uh, no end of hassle as I was trying to fill this in with stone mossy stone bricks. Again, you can use uh, whichever block you like for these blocks. My texture pack has mossy stone bricks, but this is all going to be submerged in water, and you won't see what these blocks are unless you really do get get in close and scrutinise uh, exactly what the brick is. The canal here branches off to the right, and, and that uh, that branch goes along the right side of the cathedral all the way up to the perimeter wall. But the canal also extends all the way up to the front gate of the castle. I got slightly cheeky here. I was filling in the uh, filling in the water with dirt and getting rid of the dirt, but um, it took too long to get rid of the water that way. So I just used World Edit to transform the water into air. And then once this trench was dug out, I started to begin replacing the bottom and the sides again with the mossy stone brick that we used on the sides earlier. Now you may ask, what plans am I creating this city to? Did I draw something out, did I plot something down like you guys did in your submissions last week? And the truth is, no, I didn't. It was nice to see all your guys' plans, and the best way to do that was in plans that you, you'd drawn down and submitted, so you could map out and show me what was going on in your head. But in truth, the best way to do these kinds of things is to do them in your head as as you're building as you're building the, uh, building the uh, city, as you're creating the buildings and crafting the roads. You go to get ideas and things that you do, the buildings that you build and the roads that you put down are going to give you ideas on what to build within the perimeters of those roads and next to the other buildings. So it's best not to bracket yourselves with designs that you have to stick to, especially considering the proportions might be wrong. When you're building two uh, plans up high, it can be difficult to see 
the brick proportions. As you can see, the canal went too close to the gate, so I turned it to the left here and built a great system. And here in closer detail, you can see the stone brick arch that I built and then the wooden fences that I put there to make a grate that, uh, that the water can get through. So here it is, our finished canal with the branch off to the left, all the way to the wall, and the branch off to the right, to the right of the cathedral, as well as the canal that branch, the main branch that goes all the way up to the city gates. Now, you see this big kind of rough square we've got in front of our cathedral, that looks messy, and so does the gravel, the gravel kind of L shape we've got going up to the castle. So it's time to make the roads and to shape those into something that, uh, that looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Now the gravel that we put down before was just a placeholder. It, we used it to get our bearings in terms of where was central in the area that we were building on. But uh, once we had that and once we had the cathedral down we no longer needed it. And so I've decided to dig this out and replace the gravel with cobblestone. Now it's important that you don't have a purely flat city. When we, uh, when we mapped out this area we, we gave it no elevations, no levels. But what city is truly level? Perhaps some of them are quite level, and in terms of um, you know planning and, and, and structure, it's, it's much better to build on, on flat ground. But it's also boring. It's much more boring. And uh, what we want to do is we want to give it a bit of up and down elevation to these roads, like you see here. They're one block down with, with cobblestone steps to either side. Now, once we had the roads down, we needed a way to cross over the canal with said roads. And I figured the best way to do this would be to, um, to build a bridge, right? But it had to be a bridge high enough for people to be able to walk underneath it if they're on the road and to walk underneath it, uh, and to row underneath it or sail underneath it if they're in the canal. So here I've built a double arch bridge using cobblestone, cobblestone steps and stone brick and stone brick steps. It took me a long time to map this out because I had no idea how I was going to do this until I started doing it and uh, everything was a bit of experimentation until I got the dimensions and proportions right. But I was happy with what I had in the end. And I used uh, nether rock, nether brick uh, blocks and nether brick steps to peak the, uh, peak the shelter on the bridges. And here in the background you see uh, another bridge that I'd done just over the canal section rather than a double archway over a, over a road and a canal, I've just gone for a simple bridge over the canal. Adding torches and then plumbing it up with, uh, with the road. And then adding a bit of decoration. Again, I toyed with the idea of building tunnels underneath the canals, as I thought that would have been cool, and I may still build tunnels in various other sections, but because I wanted a bit of height and elevation, I just put bridges down for the time being. And as you can see here, this is the road to start with, and then uh, I came back, added the rest of the roads, and another bridge, and we, as you can see, we've split the area off now into four quadrants. We've got the cathedral quadrant up in the top left, what's going to become the docks in the top right, the bottom right which we will be uh, putting uh, the barracks and the guilds section and the bottom left which will become the residential rich kind of area and also in the top left you see there the corners of what will become our graveyard and uh, the remaining area will become the merchant district. Now that was the roads done, the canals, and then the bridges connecting everything up. But away from that, I wanted to uh, I wanted to actually build something proper this episode, rather than just have it about roads and bridges. I wanted to get something else done. And this big patch of brick outside the front of the cathedral was really annoying. It was just a big empty patch that just seemed barren and lifeless, and I wanted to get it out of the way. I wanted to get something built here so that uh, the place didn't look like such an eyesore. And since this was going to be the square outside of the front of the cathedral, I figured this is going to be the place where we're going to build the market. So here you see me just quickly crafting down cobblestone steps and world editing in cobblestone blocks for the floor and then mapping out wooden walls, wooden blocks to get right in my head exactly where we we're going to build the market stalls. 
And once I had these down, I had to put down the fence posts that were going to hold up the cloth, the fabric roofs. Now, I was uh, a bit torn on this. I didn't know whether I wanted to go two fences high or one fence high. Ultimately, I settled on two fences high, but uh, I think that was a mistake, and you'll see why later. Once I had everything mapped out, it was time to put the cloth down. Putting everything in white first, with white cloth, and then adding the checks in yellow. Now once I put all these down, I decided that uh, the roof itself was too high. So I got welded it out, and after a couple of failed attempts, I moved the roof one level lower and kept that pattern on the uh, the remaining peaks as I put down the green wool you see here on the other market stalls. I toyed with the idea of going blue and green but ultimately it didn't look right and I realized that the best thing to do here was just to keep white as a recurring theme across the market stall peaks and then alternate the colors that I used in different ones from yellow to green to pink to red to blue. Once I got these down, the area did still feel a little bare. There wasn't enough in the market in terms of, uh, well, it didn't feel busy enough. You know, a market's a busy area. People are going to be bustling, hustling, bustling around, getting their fruit, getting their veg. And, uh, and it just wasn't good enough. You know, it, it, it felt empty. It felt like uh, some kind of zombie plague had hit the area and <laughs> killed everybody and, and there was nothing left. So I might have to come back here and add something like maybe some testificates to to populate our city and in fact that's, that might be something I do just to make the city seem a bit busier or maybe even get some of you guys in to, uh, to take a look around the city and uh, make it seem a bit fuller. Adding two lampposts at the end just to give it a bit more light closer to the cathedral. And there you are, that's the roads, the waterways, a few bridges and the marketplace done. So we're getting there, slowly but surely, and you can see there in the bottom right the corners of what will become our graveyard in the Merchant District. As you can see, the city looks much more complete with the roads and bridges. It's still a far cry from, uh, from being finished. There's nowhere to live, and there's nowhere to buy your weapons, there's no guilds, there's no wizard tower, there's no barracks, no defence, nothing. So we will be coming back to this and finishing up the city. But for the time being, it looks somewhat more complete. I hope you'll agree. So I've been Stjin, thanks for watching, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.